let's bring in Professor Tunde Esson, who is the coordinator of the International Relations Strategic Partnership at the Igbenedio University in Okada, Edo State. Very warm welcome to uh, Newsnight on the Rise News. Good evening. How, as a, I mean, uh, international relations expert, mm -hmm. how would you describe uh, the government's handling of its uh, cit citizens, you know, uh, evacuation from Ukraine into different countries? Now, Hungary and Romania has been added. Government's really been proactive here? Yeah, I, I, I must say this, that the government of Nigeria has not really done badly. As at 23rd or uh, 22nd of uh, February, nobody exactly knew exactly what could be happening, although there was an alarm from the European Union, from American government that, look, their citizens should move. But as at 21st of February, Putin, but I mean, Putin was still giving assurance that, look, they have no intention of invading Ukraine. And all international, major international relations experts, except the military intelligence, particularly the international military intelligence, uh, the Western nations, are actually sure of that. You know, there was a lot of decoy, a lot of behind the scene activities. So it caught everybody unaware. Having to move thousands of people within a space of about one week, I think it's commendable. That's what I feel. Yeah, very commendable. Yeah. And uh, the, you know, no visa policy no to visa get policy. Uh, Nigerians, uh, uh, you know, yes. uh, not only evacuated, yeah. uh, the federal government, you know, is stepping up plans too to bring back uh, its citizens home. So, uh, when you think about it, we have about 4,500 students there. There will be other unaccounted uh, Nigerians that mean, we, we, we know, you know, the, 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 the nature of things in our country. Nigerians are intelligent travelers. They are all over the world. There might be over a thousand or two thousand other Nigerians there. So ha we are all caught in a web of international crisis that caught almost everybody unaware. A build-up that started only about two weeks before then that led to a major war in Europe, the type that has not been seen this sec since the end of the Second World War, and now tried invasion of another country. So I think the very government, not only the European government, the African governments are doing their best and they are receiving cooperation from other international agencies and other governments all over the world to make sure that foreign citizens who are resident in Kiev and Ukraine are safe. Well, it does look as if the uh, embassy in uh, Poland, the embassy officials, are really overwhelmed with the influx of Nigerians, you know, still milling around the four border posts and the rest. As an expert, yeah. you know, in uh, foreign relations, mm. would you be suggesting that some kind of redeployment from uh, neighboring countries, you know, give some kind of support services to uh, the embassy officials in I, Poland? I, 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 don't, I don't think they, could, they, they, they are in such a position that they, they will not be able to handle whatever is happening. I'm talking about, we are talking about just a few thousands of people, you know, Warsaw. Is, is, is the capital of Poland, and yeah. uh, for a long time they, they have been positioned, they have been they are trained. You don't know really, and they have local staff, don't, don't never forget that. And they can recruit more, both Nigerians and Polish people, Polish uh, local staff. So they don't need uh, other people from other for, um, embassies outside of Warsaw, outside of Poland to help them. I think they are able to cope. Um, yeah, but it, and the it, other international agencies that are involved, too, ICRC mm. and some other international agencies, you understand, Norwegian Refugees Commission and UN agencies. So I think they, 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 they should be. They are not cool. overwhelmed. They are not overwhelmed. Uh, when we saw the xenophobic attack a few years ago mm. in South Africa yeah. against blacks, particularly yeah. targeted at yeah. Nigerians, yeah. we saw the quick evacuation of Nigerians by a private uh, concern, you know, uh, mm. air peace led yeah. by Chief Oyama and yeah. the rest. Shouldn't we be expecting such, you know, uh, this time around, particularly when Nigeria does not have a carrier? <laughs> you don't have a, have a carrier in order to do that. All over the world, they are, they are, every other, every airline is, is a potential carrier in situations of uh, in when you have crisis. Uh, Oyama did that for about a few hundred, if not a thousand people. We are talking about thousands of people. And Europe is a continent, you understand. Thousands of Nigerians are in Britain. And we are talking about Eastern and Central Europe. That's where most of these things are. And of course, the Nordic countries are talking about Finland mm. and um, Denmark, uh, Holland, and, Denmark and, the rest, and, yeah. and Sweden. There are other Nigerians there. So I don't think that will create a problem or anything. The British Airways are there. You don't necessarily need to have your own national carrier in order to evacuate people in terms of but crisis. When, but when other national carriers are concerned about evacuating their own citizens first, so then there, there is problem. There, there are thousands of airlines who can, which can do that. If we really want to be proactive, mm -hmm. we don't want to run into problem of bureaucracy and red tapeism. 
So there are other things. So flashpoints of crisis all over the world should be expected. That's part of the training of international diplomats. All right. Yeah. Okay. And let's look at uh, that which is not our own training. I mean, yeah. the conflict proper. Uh, yeah. It looks as if uh, tough words are still ongoing, yeah. even with the soft peddling that, look, okay, we're going to meet at Belarus uh, border, yeah. that is the Ukrainian government officials yeah. and uh, uh, Russian, yeah. you know, to jaw uh, jaw. Mm. Meanwhile, the threat of nuclear deployment mm. is high on the card. Yeah. Uh, it, it is natural for Putin to actually to react that way. If you look at the whole, you know, scenario, uh, nobody expected it. But Putin was so confident that, look, Europe will not rise up to the crisis the way they did. Because remember, in 2014, Crimea was taken out of southern Ukraine, mm -hmm. and it was annexed with uh, Russia. And of course, when you look at it, it looks so... Simply easy. because Ukraine is not a NATO member. It's so why a, would... so? So why would uh, the EU why would the EU go, I mean, uh, uh, militarily against... Go, uh, go against me. So you, you expect uh, high tone and voices and, uh, you know, such uh, belligerent tones and sometimes defiant tones on the part of uh, Ukraine and on the part of uh, uh, the Vladimir Putin, Putin, belligerent and aggressive tones. That is natural. It has had a good run for a long time. You won't, there's no doubt about that. He has succeeded in putting um, Russia on the face of the map as, you know, and increasing the possibility of an enduring multipolarism in the world as an enduring power from Europe to Middle East to parts of Africa of recent in, in Syria, in Libya, and of recent in, in, in Libya. So such confident moves actually, uh, uh, you know, laid the background for the latest move, which was a mis you know, misadventure. So it is natural for him to feel that way, you understand? But then the world has proven that, look, it cannot be done and it shouldn't be done that way. Well, he's done it now. He's yeah. uh, invaded an independent country and I'm yeah. sure uh, the officials of ICC in The Hague will be watching very keenly, particularly with the annihilation of uh, defenseless uh, Ukrainians in uh, the heart of uh, their lands there. What do you think <laughs> is still serving? Yes. And uh, do you think, I mean, imagine or what, or that, yes, um, um, charges will be brought against him yeah, before the ICC? That's, uh, yeah, uh, that, it looks like an oversimplification of uh, a global crisis. You understand that? <laughs> that? It has now been reduced to the point at which, at the point in time, when Putin will be put behind ICC and say, look, you are, you are the aggressor and that so many people have been killed. It's much more complex than that. W w what we are witnessing is an historical, is a conflict of historical dimension. If you look at it, somebody must stand up to such aggression. Uh, this is the first time after September, uh, one, 1939, mm -hmm. when Hitler actually invaded Poland. That's why Poland has been on the eye a lot for a long time. They have been victim of such history in the past, you understand? And uh, it's, it's, it was a whimper, actually, a glimpse to the big street and uh, the, the quick run on Europe that took place, that, 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 that featured and became a feature of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. so, the, 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 so it's much more complex. And uh, what we are witnessing is an interplay of international you know, uh, politics you know, between Russia, the, the Central Europe, the Western Europe, the American continent, and to a large extent, China. So it might not be that simple that, look, ICC is watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, okay. Professor Tunde. So yeah. thanks so very much uh, <laughs> for you, you know uh, giving us uh, new perspectives to yeah. Yeah. the Russian-Ukrainian uh, situation, yeah. and of course Nigerian government efforts yeah. in evacuating yeah. its citizens and uh, making them safe. Professor Tunde So is an expert in international relations with uh, the University of uh, Ibinadjo University in Okada State.